Kingwin Pro League 2015. Again, Lothar and I are going to be casting this. We have already gone through three matches today, so we have three more to go. The next one up is Trump versus Life Coach. I refilled my water bottle because I suspect we're going to be <laughs> Nosdormu Glass. Yes, we're going to be here for a while unless Nosdormu <laughs> pops out of those sneeze old shredders. Um, also, I'd like to uh, remind you, we made that announcement when the stream started, but if you, uh, you want to apply as a caster for KPL, um, Kinguin is taking applications. What is the email address for them to send the Kinguin to casting? Kinguin.net. Okay, so just send your casting videos, show, show them your casting skills, maybe your credentials if you want to. Um, if you got a recording yourself, that would probably be the best. So Yeah, that, that's your... actually a re requirement. You have to send a All DVD right. of you yeah. casting. All right, so that'd be great. I think Lothar is a bit busy in April, so I, I'm yeah. going to need the... Uh... Kinda. Yeah, There's so many events, of help there. like offline events in April. We got Seed Story Cup, um, we got Bucharest, and, you know, I have to be there with my team. Yeah, of course. That's what you're doing, right? You're in Team yeah. Hillam, the manager of the team, so... The captain. You gotta be where your players go. Captain, right. I say manager. I mean the captain. So, Trump and Life Coach, two players who... I, I think Trump's uh, rise in Hearthstone recently is... Quite impressive. He'd been out of the loop of the competitive scene for quite a while. He was, you know, he's always a super heavily present, mm -hmm. you know. Well, um, I have to admit, I'm really impressed with Trump's uh, playstyle yeah. lately. Me too. He made a vast improvement of, who, like, everyone was telling to each other, Trump is a streamer, he's not a pro player. And now, basically, Trump is a pro player. So, you know, thumbs up. He's really he, gr great, uh, great work um, for Trump here. Yeah, I mean, the, a lot of people make the difference, right? They say it's not because you're popular on Twitch that you're a great player, and that may that may be true for some of us, wink, wink, to myself. But um, you have people, players like Trump, who, although he was content with streaming for a long time, has now decided to step up his tournament game, and he's been doing amazingly well recently. And even in this event, he's actually got a pretty good score. Life Coach is currently 3-0, so that's probably, uh, I mean, that's as good as it's going to get. Life Coach stands to get up to 4-0, and I think. Since Dog lost, that would make Life Coach the number one ranked player in his group if he beat this. Yeah, because he's already 3-0 with a maximum tiebreaker score, 9-0. Okay, so, doesn't get much better than that. Yeah, he got maximum score. It's like, you know, I, I, I would have just said a racist joke, but I would not. Uh, so, he got the maximum score, and if he 3-0s Trump, he goes into further mode of being 100% um, sure of his each win. It's like, yeah, it, this that is, would be insane. Yeah, honestly, Life Coach was already on a pretty good streak. He kind of, bro it kind of got broken, but um, not really. I mean, he's still doing amazingly well right now in his tournament, uh, tournament settings. And it's not, KPL is no exception. Trump is 2-1. Again, you know, if Trump wins against Life Coach, it's going to be the same thing. Um, that's going to be happening like in group one that we saw. Trump would go to 3-1 and Life Coach would lose. He would get his first loss. They would both be on equal footing as far as their score in the group. But uh, Life Coach would be probably still slightly ahead because of the tiebreaker. Ultimately, though, we'll have to see what's going to happen. Both players, they think a lot when they make their plays. So we're going to have to... We're, we're going to be here for a while, theoretically. This might take a while. Yeah. That's true. So lineups of the players... Trump playing Druid, Hunter, and Mage. No Paladin. I'm almost disappointed. I grew fond of the Paladin deck that he, he'd been running recently. And Life Coach is playing Mage, Paladin, and Warlock. So Life Coach likes Mech Mage, unless I'm mistaken. He mentioned yeah, that he thought yeah. it was one of the strongest decks. Adrian definitely likes uh, the Mech Mage. And also Warlock is his best class. So no wonder he's brought both of those in his current setup. Like those the are comfort here. Pick. Yeah, yeah, handlock. Uh, definitely the comfort pick for life coach, and because of that, it's doable for players to uh, to plan around that a little bit by tweaking their own lineup to because they know that there's going to be a warlock. Unfortunately, uh, handlock is not a deck that has glaring weak spots, especially when played well. It's not it, you can build yourself uh, your deck to play around handlock a little better, mm -hmm. but it's not going to be a raffle stomp. It's very rarely the case, even when you do tech against it. Even with double big game hunters. Yeah, you're not guaranteed anything. I mean, they do have the mid-range minions and there's potential mm -hmm. to adapt mm -hmm. that deck to make it even sturdier against the 
the lack of uh, and you got a lot of giant. options to make uh, really good trades with Hellfires, Shadow Flames, especially with the Shadow Flame and Sylvanas on turn ten. It's like yeah. basically against a Paladin, it means you still the Tyrion unless there was a mini bot there. Yeah, who eats the second? Uh, who also has a divine shield? So yeah, so yeah, that's be... like a one potential uh, anti Sylvanas Shadow Flame deck. Yep. You could have, I mean, it depends on, I mean, Trump is not playing Paladin, so that's not going to be an issue in this case. But in general, um, I, I feel like Trump's lineup is a bit more on the aggressive side. This is like the power trio, you know, Druid, Hunter, and Mage, three decks that dictate the tempo like no other, especially mm -hmm. if the Mage is a Mech Mage. If you've got Mech Mage, Midrange Hunter, and Fast Druid, you've got yourself pretty much the three most tempo-heavy decks that don't necessarily try to, you know, gimmick win like a Face Hunter or... Uh, freeze mage who is a much you know a deep complete opposite side druid and hunter and mage are very well rounded decks if they are of the mid-range type that's true that's true and um hmm. well druid hunter I, i'm like thinking maybe i didn't see trump playing midrange hunter at all i think i have i have seen him actually he was uh he was reluctant to switch to hunter at all um, a okay. while back, but then he started accepting the fact that it was a great deck, and by switching, he then corrupted his soul, and now well, he plays Hunter too. You know, that's the, that's the switch of mentality that you have to do yep. when you want to become to become a really great player, because you know you have to play with the most powerful decks most of the time. You play like with the meta game or against the meta game. Against the meta game, yeah. Yeah, and Trump is on the dark side for now. Yeah, for for the time being, but I, I don't really blame him honestly. You want to go for consistency is generally mm -hmm. the it's the safest way. And if you think your skill, you know, if if your skill is going to help you pilot those common decks better than you think your opponent can, then generally speaking, that edge that you have is going to be what matters most. But life coach is a very strong player, so we'll have to see to say the least. This is going to go. Yeah, to say the least, life coach is a very strong player. But it's going to be a great series, honestly. This match is going to be awesome. For the time being, we're still waiting for life coach. <laughs> no surprise, I don't think, for anybody well, here, but... Maybe he's visiting the toilet and the uh, rope coaching the, you know, <laughs> he turned there. <laughs> oh, please don't. Oh, please don't. Um, that being said, so Trump is going to be playing Hunter as his first deck, we know that much. So being, uh, being you know, playing Hunter, knowing that, what would Life Coach's best deck be from Mage, Pally, and Warlock? If he were to... Uh, to blind pick one of those three, which he does. Um, I would have to say that Life Coach might bring Warlock first. I think he does that a lot. He leads with Warlock because he doesn't want to get exploited mm -hmm. uh, as a last deck. If somebody brought a, a lineup that's completely uh, sick against Warlock, he wants to seal that first win and then move on to the rest. I've seen him do that countless times. Yeah, totally agree with that. So. Unless it's Warlock, then I would think it's Paladin. Right. I think that's also a pretty good deck to lead with. I mean, Warlock, Paladin are probably better than Mech Mage. You can... Then again, Mech Mage is also a pretty good deck. The thing is, I don't know if you lead with it. Well, you have to, you have to think um, what would Trump will lead with, right? Yeah. So is it if Druid you... or Hunter? If it's Hunter, then Paladin is really bad. But Paladin is kind of okay against Mage and Druid. Druid, yeah. Sorry, something is scratching my throat. throat. <clears throat> um, so, I would have to say, from a life coach perspective, I think there's no big difference with what with which uh, deck you start. Because every single deck has like two good matchups and one bad. And one bad, yeah, exactly. So, so yeah, I think, I think in this position, his lineup is yeah. actually a bit better than Trump's for that specific reason. Because if it comes down to one last deck that Trump has, Life Coach might, even though he might be down two to one, his two remaining decks might be the two to have a great matchup against him. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and th that's really what you want to do in Conquest. You want to abuse your opponent more so than the specific games. You want to check. You, you want to make sure your lineup matches to his. And uh, I really like the fact that Life Coach is systematically bringing Handlock. He's predictable, but because it's such a solid deck. It's really hard to exploit. But then maybe at one week when someone will be like, okay, War uh, Warlock is the constant with uh, life co in Life Coach um, deck building choices. So I will take out every single my deck against Life Coach 
uh, warlock to like you know win just always. Beat, just beat just, the, just, just, just beat, beat the warlock, yeah. and then I will be like, okay, I got you. I didn't bring warlock this time, or I did bring warlock, but it's zoo. Yeah. Um, if, if life coach brings a zoo, I'm actually uh, reconsidering Hearthstone as a whole. <laughs> I, I just don't see him who, who knows, that much. He is too. Who knows what happens after Black Rock Mountain, right? By the way, the did dragons, you get those yeah. uh, JPEGs to throw on stream? That would be. I don't think we saw quite them. An... Well, we can always talk about it. We have a few minutes about uh, to right. fill the time, right? So, let me just um, pop up the cards at my screen because I'm not really sure if I remember that correctly. There was a um, six mana dragon, right? Yep, the uh, dragon, the volcanic Drake was the six volcanic mana dragon. Drake, yeah. Six four, right? If I yeah, remember six, correctly. Six four for six, and it costs one less for each minion yeah. that died this turn. So Blizzard is introducing the mechanic that we all thought might be not a theme, right? Just like a one one of of a card, which was which was Dragon's Breath, right? Yep. Because that was the same mechanic introduced to a spell. But now we see that uh, there is a minion that has the same mechanic, and for me, this might be quite, um, let's say, it, it might be very powerful in, uh, in the game, but also it might be abused. Because every single time a card might be played for 0, 0.0 mana, this might break the game, like in my perspective. Well, and it, let's assume two minions trade into one another, right? Let's assume you just have two minions that die. This is essentially a better tall strider that has the dragon synergy, right? Yes. Yeah. But Very strong. you can build a deck that spawns many minions, right? And then your opponent, you can assume your opponent also plays minions. So if you trade two of your minions into two of his minions, then your Volcanic Drake costs two, two points of mana. And that's not like an unlikely scenario, right? To trade. Not really, no. Like, you know, two, two minions for two. Yeah, it happens all the time with Hunted Creepers, with, uh, um, with Unleashed the Hounds. Imagine Unleashed the Hounds and Volcanic Drakes. Turn three, Volcanic Drake against an aggro yeah. deck where you just trade everything into it. Yeah. I mean, it's not impossible to see that. And I wouldn't even be surprised if we did see something like that. And I think that's kind of the strength of dragons um, in that they have pretty bulky bodies. The only thing I'm waiting for for Dragon Synergy right now is a card like a Mech Warper for dragons. And I'm not talking about the, um, the fact I that it reduces see. mana cost. I mean, a card that says all your dragons do this or oh, all your okay. dragons okay, have like something that applies... Mm -hmm to more dragons um, than just themselves, you know? All of them mm -hmm. right now have dragon interactions, but it doesn't really interact with other dragons outside yeah, of the I fact see your that point. the ones it, that hold, It so. doesn't have a, the tribal Definitely flavor. Definitely not. Nope. Yeah, not it's yet. like a... Well, to be honest, that's it's fine. also something that uh, might be as a flavor for dragons, because, you know, dragons are powerful creatures, ancient creatures, so why would they even have a, like a tribal tribal feeling be between each other? They, they solo, they're like solo heroes. Yeah, they, so, right? they solo queue into armies and they just wreck yeah. everything. Okay, I get <laughs> yeah, this. and then, then you have the, um, you know, the, the, um, the wheel in Hearthstone that says, uh, worthy opponent, worthy right? opponent, yeah. <laughs> and then the dragon pops up. I'm like, okay, thank you. So, I'm just curious guys. to see though, like, how effective that whole dragon shift will be. I mean, it, it's contesting with a few, uh, a few, a few slots that are really prevalent right now, but I suspect after Blackrock Mountain hits. Um, our entire understanding of how dragons are played will be different. What I'm worried about is that because it's such a slow ish deck by design. Is going to get overly abused by decks like Face Hunter. Well, that's something I would be a little afraid of. This yeah. kind of ties in, into countering that, though. But on the other hand, you have the Volcanic Drake, which is slow in the basic cost, but might be super fast if, mm -hmm. if you build your deck right and you, an example, queue up against a Face Hunter, which can drop like three creatures on board already on turn two, right? So, yeah, or Shadow Flame and then play Volcanic Drake for one mana in a yeah, type so, of handlock so deck. The Volcanic Drake is one of the cards that I have really my radar, radar, radar on. It's like yeah. something that might be really, really powerful. I think the Drake might be something you want to build a deck uh, like around, around, around this, this type of card. And I also, I assume, there will be more cards with that mechan mechanic. 
Maybe not. If we have one in mage. We have one in neutral. There might be another one or one or two more, perhaps, with that mechanic. I mean, there's still 17 or 14 cards to go. Yeah. Uh, whichever, how, however many we saw. It, so it would we'll fit still, uh, for druids. Like yeah. a druid would get this type of creature or like a an, spell like this. This might be even more powerful than in other classes. They're gonna get a 10 mana dragon that costs two less. For each minute that died this turn, <laughs> I can already I can already see it. They play they play Doctor Boom and then Doctor Boom dies and they just play this for free. Oh yeah, uh, that's great. So, sounds good to me. Okay, um, we know Life Coach is alive. Will play, yeah, Life Coach will play Paladin with an right. oh and Trump will play Hunter. Oh, the only one bad matchup for Paladin I think, unless it's um, unless it's a midrange Hunter. If there's a face hunter, then it's kind of okay. Actually, I think it's the opposite. I feel like you're you better agree? off against. Yeah, I think it's much tougher to recover from a uh, from a face hunter as Pally than it is from mid range. From what I've gathered, uh, I think it's a bad matchup either way. In general, it's a, one of the tougher ones. But I I feel in general that um, face hunter is just able to abuse paladins until hmm. they find their sludge belchers, right? They really just have sludge belchers. Unless they're running two anti kill bots, then they can find that as well to help themselves out. But in general, it's really, really difficult. You can remove the stuff, but you're always taking the damage. Unlike Priest, which can hero power to heal. Well, I don't exactly agree with that. I, I oh, think fine. that, that um, aggressive Hunter has the edge here because it just doesn't give any, you know, Fs about what Paladin does, and if the Paladin spawns more minions, then your Unleashed Hounds is just more more explosive, and you, the the Paladin doesn't have any heals until but we, turn we, 8. We agree then, right? Because I, I just said I think uh, Face Hunter is better than midrange. Oh yeah. So we agree. Okay, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah okay, never yeah. mind. Then we were not uh, disagreeing on anything. That's that's the argument I was making. So yeah, um, I definitely think <laughs> Sorry, Face I Hunter is better than midrange. Never mind. No problem, it's probably a switch. Um, one of us probably said face instead of mid-range, or mid-range instead of face, doesn't matter. So, the game will be starting in seconds. Uh, a life coach slash Trump second. So, I don't know how you... I think there's like some kind of time dilation going on. You're um, saying that that's a value second because it lasts more than a second? Yeah, you, you extend <laughs> the second and thus you get more value packed in the same amount of time. More seconds, in seconds. Yeah. It's time. It's efficiency at its best. You time dilate the bubble in which you're contained, and nobody can go at that speed besides yourself. Okay, so it's a mid-range hunter. This is a man high man and a hunt master. Phew. All right. So, well, that's a 90 seconds mulligan. Also, that's one thing I'd like Blizzard to change. Speaking of mulliganing, it's one of those things where, if you've ever played, if you've ever looked into any game theory, there's this thing called the Nash Equilibrium, which essentially tries to tell you what the optimal move is when you feed into it an array of, of plays, essentially. And mm -hmm. the moment you look at something like the mulligan thing that we're seeing, where people just wait and wait and wait, the optimal thing to do to start off the mulligan phase is to wait. And as a result, your opponent's best response is to, to wait. wait. So it ends up being this boring, um, so phase in the game. We need just one, one, uh, one little update to this, to this Mulligan yeah. phase, which is lock the cards, and they will be exchanged after both players are locking down the cards. Exactly. That would probably be the the best way to do it. So we'll see how things go. But well, Life Coach has a great cure. Yeah, I really like Life Coach's hand, and I think he might be playing that, uh, you know, heavy value paladin with double shredder, double golem. Mm hmm. I've seen him play that recently. Brought it to a tournament. I think it might have been last week even. Yeah, I don't remember, but... Um, the, well, now it kind of sucks. Because you can't really play Peacekeeper when you predict it's a <laughs> mid -range Hunter, but you, yeah. you don't know that yet. Because Hunted Keeper is in both versions. But if it is a face hunter and he's had this low of a start, I think you're fine with it. Just right. to put a body on the board? Yeah. But I'd then, probably you, be then you fit it to the bow. So what about kill, killing the hunted creeper and spawning on one one minion? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, you want you don't want to play Aldor here. That's the thing. Like you really don't care about the uh like if the face hunter has only a hunted creeper, 
you don't really care about putting down the Aldor. You really just want a 1-1. One, one. It does the same thing. It trades with a minion, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll have to see what Life Coach opts to do. He goes ahead and... Uh, might not will he trade? It. Yeah, he will trade. Yes. Okay. Doesn't want to feed too many 1-1s one into that creeper. It's already bad enough that he's getting two of them with those spiderlings. Can't let it get any more value. And does he find a Leoc? No, it is not. And that is a free kill for Choose Hover Champion. So, actually, Life Coach is going to get the initiative here. He's going to have a weapon and a minion on the board. That's quite nice. That isn't bad. Uh, that's, that's actually great for Life Coach here. And other interesting point is that um, when you trade those both spiders for the mini bot, then you leave a recruit for the uh, for the quartermaster. So and he just opts to leave the. Whoa, that's gonna oh, get punished instead yeah. of losing. Well, not maybe punished. You have unleashed the hounds, so it's yeah. not like super bad when you leave something on the board. But you, the the only difference is well, I mean, I say get punished. You know, you're right. I was exaggerating. I think I was over exaggerating. This was like the caster syndrome. <laughs> I just, I just literally, I literally just call the biggest thing. It's just that instead of getting a one-one on the board, he's gonna keep a two-one, and that's going to basically close in the health differential. And it's also going to enable that choose our champion to heal back the two damage that was just dealt. Oh, wow! I didn't anticipate that. That he won't trade for any minions. No, this is way too deep for me. <laughs> They're playing a deep game. So he puts Trump on a clock and Trump is like, hmm? What the hell happened? Did he misclick? <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I don't think, no, I don't think they can misclick when they take that much time thinking about their move. <laughs> There's no way. Well, Trump is now thinking if he didn't sacrifice the recruit, he has a quartermaster next turn. At least that would be my thinking. I think you've got to at least make sure that the 3-3 three, three doesn't come out, because that would be a pretty tough situation to recover from. Mm -hmm. yeah, that was the Trump thinking too, because that, that's what he traded for that 1-1. One, one. Wow, and the killbot, that's great. I didn't think he uh, he would play an anti killbot in this type of um, paladin. Maybe it's like a lay on hands. And... Well, I, I kind of like like you if you kill the mad scientist and it's a freezing trap, which it's likely to be if it is a mid range mm -hmm. hunter, and your heal bot or your shielded mini bot comes back to your hand, and either of those is not too bad. Not too shabby. Hunter. And you even you know you curve in with a sky golem. I really do like that. We'll have to see what. Uh, Life coach opts to do, but I, I like the Well, hillbot. the Palted Shredder is not bad also. What about... Well, he didn't use the Peacekeeper on turn 3, so he won't use it now. Hmm. We'll have to see. Uh, uh, but I think if, if Life coach wants to be, uh, like, uh, efficient with his mana, then he will play... Uh, the anti keyboard this turn. Yeah, I, I think that makes quite a bit of sense. Well, well, what? <laughs> A uh, little bit of a graphical uh, bug here. We had to restart yeah. the Skype conference. We had to resume because after four hours, Skype automatically closes when we talk. So have to wait a little bit. You guys see stuff we don't see. Well, we can talk about the matchup. <laughs> okay, we see the game. All so right, he, we're back. So you opted to play the anti killbot. Which... Um, from what I gather, yeah. I think the healbot was the most, the safest line of play. And he did not kill the mad scientist, though. He just went face with a 2-2 and kept his weapon charged, so... Mm -hmm. That was also pretty solid. 
lot of got um, casted, got cast, sorry. And um, hmm. now, I think that's the that's the point where you want to use the peacekeeper, maybe, because if you slam down the vulture, hmm. Uh, Savannah Hyman is coming out soon, right? Yeah, I know, but Savannah Hyman is six points of attack, and this is this creature is five, so there's no big difference, right? And you don't want to leave a beast on the board anyway. I, I keep thinking that the play the life coach made to not kill the mad scientist might have been a bit weird because now he has he can't kill a, a five drop, and he has to deal with a six drop kind of in a delayed manner. Um, but then again, he's got pretty good answers from here. Hmm. Well, he opted for the Alted Skyvon, which is interesting. Well, he's at maximum health points. Yeah, so he he's, not, he's not really worried yet. And double Peacekeepers! Oh, oh my wow. god, that doesn't get better. Actually, you know what? I almost prefer the Aldor Peacekeeper. Kill the 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 high main and then consecrate everything after pinging Lothar with your weapon. This is probably one of the craziest ones. That's exactly seven mana. You wipe the board. Mm -hmm. He has to do it. Yeah. I, I can't imagine he would do anything else. I think so. Oh, man. Yep, yeah, that's what he goes for. That's uh, really a great move. That's a really great move, and you only lose three points of health with that uh, with that play. Yeah, in effect, and you don't even have to worry about silencing off the high main or anything like that, so... Mm -hmm. You're in a very far ahead position, and if that 6-3 doesn't die, you kill Tuzad, it's back to life next turn, and you're oh, gonna wow. be well, racing you ahead. Fu uh, you are fueling the... Unleash the Hounds on the future turns, but do you care? You're at 22 points of life. I don't know, I, I don't think he's that worried about it, honestly. So next turn you can drop a Belcher if you feel threatened by anything. And Trump has a really bad hand. Like, he has to drop the Web Smears, that's for sure. But does he use the Knife Juggler? Because he wants to use the Knife Juggler with conjunction with the Hounds, right? And yeah. um, two minions from the Hounds, that's not the best scenario. You, you kind of need to get more value out of it, especially if Muster for Battle can come out. So I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if Trump just opted to keep... The hounds for later, but still play the juggler. We'll have to see what he opts for. Maybe uh, where the knives go might influence his decision as well. Well, apparently, uh... oh, that's mm. a bad knife. That's an okay knife. I kind of like my Keltazod here. I like myself a good old 6 4, but there is an argument to be made for Sludge Belcher instead. Uh, There's an argument. Uh, I think you should use the Belcher. Maybe even the Peacekeeper. Like Belcher, Peacekeeper, and... He's uh, gonna have to see what he finds in there. If it's Ascension, things might change. And he does not. He's just gonna KT get himself back. Oh, wow. at six so he goes for the value. Value yeah. coach. Oh man, this is crazy. Second knife, knife juggler, does it change anything? No. You have no. to... You have mark. to un, uh, mark the K KT, right? You you can't allow life coach to get additional belchers. <laughs> that would be you must construct additional belchers. No problem. I got a KT right here. Oh, oh man! Talk well, about a beast. Well, not really. Never mind. <laughs> that's a good target for the peacekeeper. <laughs> Follow the rules. I'm gonna call him the beast keeper. Oh man, so basically this position is theoretically good, in practice not so good. Yeah, and do you have to use the kill command defensively? It feels really bad. I think you have to though, if you look at this board. That extra 6-4 is really a deal breaker for, for Trump's line of play. He has to do uh, what he might not feel like, unfortunately. Well, he goes for the beast anyway. Yeah. And luckily for him, the Palted Sky Golem is not enough to kill the beast. Hey, Life Coach is laughing in his beard right now. He's like, oh, yes, it's enough. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, now it's enough. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you just uh, think ahead of time and get those top decks. That's, that's how you play Hearthstone. 
So he's gonna get a master battle and, um, and the hero power, right? You saw yeah. one on Leash the Hounds, but if if Trump top decks and Leash the Hounds next turn after that kind of play, you're getting wrecked, mate. I think you're just playing double Belcher into it and saying, "Don't wreck me, mate." I mean, that's gonna be really difficult. Turn ten, double Belcher. It doesn't get much better than that. But we'll see what he what he uh, what he wants to do. Well, he opts for the Belcher instead of the Monster for Battle. So he's going to be a bit more aggressive. Instead of playing the trading game, he's going to let Trump trade his own beast away. And probably just go face at that point. Is that or you attack the 1-7? No, I think you just go face here. Yeah, six damage is a substantial amount of damage. That Mogushan Warden is not really important. <laughs> wow, that's a terrible Mogushan Warden as well. Yeah, he lost the taunt. He lost the tone and he's feeding a 3-3 to your opponent. <laughs> if I gave you that for one mana, would you play it? No, thank you. A 1-7 for one. Think about well, the maybe, maybe based for alchemist. Priest. Yeah. Inner fire. Inner fire that, yeah. dude. Get a 7-7. Seven, seven. Oh, serious Trump value. Looks closer to the camera. It's intense. He's watching that juggler. He's gonna put an apple on someone's head. Who is it gonna be? And the apple falls on whose head? Oh, the paladin's head. <laughs> the, on, only 18 more apples to go. 15. Yeah, that's fine. He's got a, he's got a no occurred. Orchard. How do you pronounce that word? I've actually got no idea. Uh, which which word? Orchard, I guess. Like the orchard. Word, no clue. I'm actually not a native speaker either, so I'm hmm. as confused as you are. Well, okay, well, let's see what life coach offers. I think it's Orchard, are. though, honestly. Anyway, that being said, Trump will need an Orchard. A call out of pain. Yeah, hmm. it's a pretty solid card in Pally. It's just one yeah, that you I don't thought, see very often. It's... Yeah, I thought the people retreated, uh, retreat, retreated from the Acolytes. But that would be a nice uh, April target. So now you do use your Peacekeeper. You have to kill the knife juggler. So you sacrifice the peacekeeper, right? For that. Yeah, it's the only thing you're really worried about. Even yeah. though you have the Acolyte of Pain, you can't put uh, hedge your bets on that one thing. I don't think it's realistic at all. I like uh, that life coach did use his hero power. He doesn't worry about the Unleashed the Hunts. Oh, oh, never mind. Wow, okay. <laughs> but good that he killed the knife juggler. Yeah, otherwise he would have drawn infinite cards. Yep. Honestly, if that jungle panther was a um, what's it named, the starring buzzard, yeah, yeah for five that would be... mana, that would be like a huge buzzard. So now you clear Belchers. That's basically it. My question is, how does Trump hope to win at this point? Uh, I don't see a way out, to be honest, yeah. because he's top decking one card at a in a turn, and he deals two points of damage. So that. Um, even with second kill command and a beast, that leaves life coach on basically five turns. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm thinking. Is like Trump is it feels to me like he's going through the motions. I guess if he's got another sludge belcher, um, uh, maybe he's hoping for the rope, uh, for the uh, the hero power to put mm. his opponent on the rope essentially. But I don't know if it's a uh, very Effective way to deal with everything. The jungle panther comes down. He didn't play it for fear of consecration, perhaps, but now he's got to go all in. Quality? No, well, you don't need that at all. So you sacrifice. Uh, sacrifice. You damage your acolyte of pain. Well, that big hunter would be useful eight turns ago. When the beast was there, yeah, you could have gotten an instant three three, yeah. but I... without the rule, is it? You, you could trade it, I guess. Trade your six one into it if you wanted. If you really want that three three, you can get it. It's no problem. Let me think. Um, do you sacrifice the Palted Sky Golem for the beast? I think you do. 
why not? You're gonna get two minutes, you're gonna get a 3 3 and a 6 1. So yeah. I think you should might as well do that. I already yeah, do like unleash the hounds were being played. Oh, never mind. Well, he. Yeah, you, I'm, I'm being s silly. You just go aggressive on the hunter. Why would you wait? Yeah, you can't. Like, the best top deck you could get is a kill command to kill the Belcher, but that doesn't even put him anywhere close to killing you, and you're gonna get yeah, guaranteed lethal yeah. with the 6 1 and the 4 3. You've seen two unleashes, so the whiplash mechanics are pretty much gone. Yeah, going for faces. I mean, when you're playing for the board, it's fine. Um, to just trade here is a great one, but. You know, it's just not necessary. You're right. Well, that's gonna be a pretty big beast. <laughs> but the quality is uh, just looming around the corner. Oh, there's gonna be a Belcher down at least. The beast is gonna have to eat something before it dies. And it's lethal. 6-1. Yep. Well, it's like 22 points of damage for the quality. Yeah, there's no way. And consecration. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah life coach. Coach is a, did you see Life Coach pose? It's like, it's like a, in a fairy tale. The way equality comes. So Trump played the game out. At some point, he knew he was dead, but still played out uh, the last turn. And that's game. Life Coach takes the first game against Trump. Uh, as long as I predicted, despite the fact that. Trump was playing Hunter, so Paladins for Life Coach here is yeah. actually out of his roster. He's got a Warlock left and a Mage. Which Trump is, still has um, access to midrange. Locking the Paladin is something that um, really should uh, Life Coach make happy. Like the 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 reminder of decks um, for Trump, which is Druid and Mage. Well, okay, never mind. I'm mistaken. It's still it's, fine, it's, honestly. It's still fine. The Paladin doesn't really. Have a difference. Mm. Have a di big difference. The war locking out the war. The warlock would be in, would have been much more impactful, I think, for life yeah. coach. But ultimately, his entire lineup, as we said earlier, has a 66% on average. You know, as far as good matchups go. So yeah. Trump is going to have to pick the one deck here that beats uh, life coach's next pick. So we're told that Trump is going to be picking hunter, which means he's probably hoping his opponent plays. Um, I wouldn't even say warlock. Actually, I think he's. Betting on it. No, nope. life coach will play mage. Okay, so uh, life coach uh, so one step ahead, but there is a houndmaster in Trump's deck. Yeah. If that gets up, that's a bit tricky to deal with. You have to spend removal and a few mechs in general to handle the houndmaster. True. Well, um, midrange hunter. It can be midrange hunter has one problem. It ha it can have a really awkward draw. Like, well, you know, it's got uh, very early. It's got a potential to be super aggressive early game, but sometimes it just whiffs, and it's got to transition to you know the four drops, the five drops right away, and that's way too slow to handle yeah. a, uh, a mech mage. That is way too slow. So you need to get those mad scientists. You need to get those haunted creepers, um, and, and those that bow jugglers and uh, crazy. bone knife jugglers and. Have to draw. Yep, I would so, tend to agree. Yep. We'll be jumping into the game shortly. In Kingwin Pro League, Season 1. Life, Life Coach vs. Trump. This is the first match. It's been ongoing for five weeks now. We're at the second <laughs> game. <laughs> okay. Wow. No, there's no Mac Walker. So, no wow. But still, great draw. You throw back a clockwork or do you keep both and just. Uh, I think you draw, drop one. I like it, but I feel like the second one is just useless. Because you, you don't yeah. want to race that much. You do, but at the well, same time, like you really don't have to race. Maybe you drop down both because you have, a, you have a coin and you just keep the snow trigger. So you mulligan away everything apart from the snow trigger. What about this? Yeah, that's possible if you find yourself that mech warper. If you really want to get it. The thing is, what if your hand contains... And you wouldn't even be that unhappy again uh, about a blast mage, right? Hmm. It would be a bit of a slow start, though. You can't afford letting the. Well, oh, that's good. That's good enough, honestly. Getting yeah. that mirror to T is going to help quite a bit. Hunter's map. That's... Well, that's also important because you have oh. the web spare. Trump's got a pretty good hand as well. Except yeah. he needs to draw into mid-game threats pretty oh, soon. Wow. And oh my oh, wow. 
goodness. Wait, do you do that turn two? Or do you just vomit everything you've got? Okay. Actually, you could just do it what now. What about... No, never mind, do it now. What about mid scientist now? And you do it next turn? Yeah. Well, life I mean, will be now sitting 90 seconds to think about the iterations, so... Uh, we, we have space and time to talk about it. What would you do, like, in... Your first instinct would be to slam the mech warper down and just play the two clockwork gnomes, well, right? Well, I, I say that, but the, the, the drawback to that play, you know, now that I look at it a little more closely, is that your follow-up is Mad Scientist or Snow Chugger, and that's mm -hmm. perfectly fine, or you ping something. The problem is by playing two clockworks, you're guaranteed to feed something into that uh, web spinner. So if you play Mad Scientist right now instead, your clockworks might live. Yeah. That's probably the biggest upside to playing the Mad Scientist instead. <laughs> Trump is just like sitting there pa patiently. He's like, how does Mech Mage take so long to make a turn? And the reason <laughs> is, if you saw his hand, you would probably take as much, if not more time. And well, he's going to go for the Mech Warper double clockwork. Going to take a solid 90 seconds to fall down on the board, and Trump is going to be, uh... Well, oh, God. Trump might play... Mad Scientist Hunter's Mark, right? I like that. I think that's pretty good. Alternatively, you play uh, Abusive Sergeant, but you're feeding a ping to your opponent, and you really don't want to do that. Now Trump is looking amusingly devastated. Two words yeah. that don't really go well together. But... Well, you know, that one clock will, know, will trigger a freezing trap. Oh, that's interesting. So you don't kill a Mech Warper? Uh, I, think... I, have, I have learned a lesson a long time ago. You have to Wiseman kill those? Told me, yeah. yeah, you have to kill the Mech Warper. Do you want to give your opponent a Wild Grove for, or like a coin for every single creature he has in the deck? I don't think so. Well, almost every single creature. Yeah. Good God. If Dr. Boom would be a Mech. I mean, I've got a monitor here that I love dearly, but it might have gone out the window a long time ago. Yeah, imagine two mech warpers into innervate Dr. Boom. You mean that doesn't already happen when Dog is playing? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, he got a high main from that web spinner. You want to talk about value? Trump is going to be smiling yeah, for days. That's value, but um, is it fast enough? It fast might be a enough. problem. Well, you know, it's turn yeah, two. Right. You have nothing in your hand, basically, because if you drop the knife juggler, then rest in peace juggler yeah rest in peace juggler exactly because now i assume life code will drop the med scientist right now that way if it's explosive trap you no it's never going to be explosive i guess you play just to get merit to t on the back end on turn three because your turn three is going to be a bit clunky here by the way like no matter what he could also just go for the face if he wanted but then you're super weak to unleash you get demolished by unleash in fact yeah. yeah. If you play an Oyotron, Unleash the Hounds really wrecks you. If you play Snow Chugger, the same is true. Although you do get the initiative back, mm -hmm. but it's still a bit clunky. I like Mad Scientist a bit more in this position. Yeah. Whether or not you trade to trigger the freezing before the bow comes out is up to you, but I feel like that's probably the optimal line of play. Yeah, but then you lose the power to trade for the Nav Juggler. So you just go face first? I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. Well, it's gonna be a full face turn and forces the uh, forces Trump to have the answer. That's not bad. But now, wow, the web spinner. That's yeah, really this, important. This is a very good web spinner. It's triggering mirror entity and it's killing a clockwork gnome with the knife trailer potential. Well, no, 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 no. You, you. Oh yeah, right. You're right. Yeah, it's a crazy wow. uh, web spinner. Crazy web spinner. That's kind of lucky. If he hits face. So, <laughs> Trump. I mean, uh, he, he's he's got to be trading here. I don't see why he would not. So he's gonna get himself a freezing trap, and, and what it kills. What spinner? It kills. We don't know. Face. What? Wow. So now you web spinner. No, you clock clock or gnome. To fr trigger freezing trap, then you clock your gnome into nav juggler. You could throw the web spinner actually. Why would you? You want to get the draw first, right? Because you don't need the spare part right now, and maybe a 
beasts that will be for three points of mana will spawn that will be useful this turn more than okay you mean bringing trigger. back the clockwork okay yes yes yeah yes. you you bounce you first the play. first clockwork gnome then you attack with web spinner into web spinner you see what's what's the outcome yeah and we're gonna see whether or not he gets a silver bag patriarch <laughs> and that's uh, probably the best outcome you could hope for well um what about king mukla give us a bonus some bananas yeah you can give good bananas that's not a i problem. like my hunters malnourished and anemic don't feed them potassium Okay, so he triggers the freezing trap. Now he will sacrifice the web spinner, I assume. No, no, he doesn't do it. Oh yeah, he does do it. All right, what is out? Silverback, go! Oh what? wow, counter second beast. time beast. <laughs> What's even happening in this game? I don't get this. Well, so... blades. Replay the clockwork. Clockwork? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's gonna cost you so much anyway. Turn to oh, that's a, that's one of the worst top decks you could have gotten. So you just drop Timberwolf and Freezing Trap? That's awful. You know, you, you just... play your you can you can you can't play Timberwolf here. I don't think you're gonna get potential value later on. At least with the hyenas at the whole like the very best. Oh man, and Life Coach's hand never stops improving. Does he just replay the Freezing to troll his opponent? I don't know. I like it. So Snow Trigger and Neutron, right? Yeah. yeah, obviously. Well, I say obviously, but Life Coach does make uh, does take his own line to play. And, and this is also really have nasty. Woodwing, Woodwing Blade, which can trade for a bigger minion with the Yeah, like uh, you know, you give it to the Neutron and you ping yeah. that wolf, exactly. for instance. <laughs> and you oh. have a uh, second Snow Tracker just to this ignite is, those weapons later on. Completely obscene. Well, next turn is um, is Savannah High Main, so it's not like looking really bad for Trump either. But the the Anoetrons will stop so many damage. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter if you have a Deathwing versus the Anoetron; it's still gonna hello you until you quit the game. Mm -hmm. That's what it does. So it, I guess you do. I do like the Whirling Blades with a ping and possibly the second Anoetron. Um, but we'll see what he uh, asks for. Why not second snow trigger? I like the potential second guaranteed, freeze. Uh, okay, guaranteed freeze now. No, no you, you can like freeze two two targets, you know. Okay, yeah, I see what you mean. Just uh, being able to freeze two things while you're mm -hmm. waiting for value. Yeah, and uh, another one has like immediate value on board because it's a taunt, so it affects the immediate state of the board uh, immediately. Yeah. And snow trigger has to wait one turn. To do anything. Yeah, but he that. goes for the Anoetrons, okay. So he doesn't agree with me. Well, it's not a bad card, that, but. Mm hmm. It's also not gonna be enough. I mean, I, this is gonna be a really good okay, card. Okay, I, I get it. Because Life Coach wanted to play the Beast this turn. That's why he played the Anoetron to trade with the Huntmaster and play the Beast. That, yeah, that was up, his uh... thinking. But does he want to play the Beast, the beast into a Savannah High Main? That's the problem. Honestly, because you've seen two freezing traps, I feel like you almost do. Because you could trade away that. Well, I mean, Blast Mage is also. Yeah, Blast Mage is also really cool. Yeah, I do like Blast Mage. I mean, if those two Divine Shields stay on the Anoa Tron for that Savannah High Main, Trump's mm -hmm. going to be crying for days. The thing is, if there's yeah. an Iron Beak Owl, then suddenly a little trickier. It's still not bad. I would go here for the Blast Mage, I think. I you really guarantee like yourself the clear of the Honda Master with your ping, even if you whiff four times. And you yeah. freeze your opponent's uh, face. And you have a fireball in your hand. So you're basically, you know, saying, I would be racing you. Again, the same yeah. thing happened like in the Paladin game. Same scenario. Oh, but he goes he's... for the beast. Well, well he's I, not going to change his game him. plan. I can't blame him, but he... In... Well, he has seen two freezing traps, and I think that is the selling point of that play. Mm -hmm. Is that, look, he's got a fireball and the nine damage. That's 15 right there between those two cars. Mad Scientist, a complete whiff with two freezing traps already have been, having been played by Tron. Yeah, but the, that and now Tron are really... How <laughs> can you... I don't know, man. You, you can't say to... anything but annoying, but you have to. Oh! Oh, wow! Does Life Coach really think this through? 
I guess you could. There's a good uh, argument to be made for taking more than five seconds. <laughs> yeah, you have to. If you're life those. coach, yeah. You have to drop those and go face. It's like no brainer. What is a brain? Okay, that's that's such a high amount of damage. And now Trump is oh, unleashed the hounds. That's also important because that also too denies little, too late, the or... bomb values, I think. So Well, you have to trade your mad scientist away first in the snow chugger to clear the board, to clear room, sorry for the unleash. That is mm -hmm. probably the first step at the very And you least. want to clear the beast also, right? I think so. You get yourself a free 3-3. Three, three. Well, free. For you free. get yourself a 3-3. Three, three. A free 3-3 three, three for free. Stop this. You're confusing me. Hmm. Oh, no. Dog. All right. The, the dog is on the board. But the dog already played against RDU. He lost. So does he trade with that beast? I mean, he has to make room for the hyenas first. <laughs> so he has to at least weaken... Uh, a little bit of stuff. Well, right. he didn't see the Bless Mage, and there was one occasion when Bless Mage was kind of a good play, so maybe he will not sacrifice every single of his uh, doggies. I can't fault him for that. Alright, so this is, a, this is a pretty good order of operations for Trump here. Spawning as many minutes as possible before he takes out the Boom Boss to reduce the possibility of it hitting face. One Hyena goes down, and the... Wow. Well, that's not a bad board for the for life coach to handle. Yeah, definitely not. Pretty easy. Mech Warper. Two, wow, three. so you can drop Mech Warper, Snow Chugger, Chugger and Goblin Best Mage, left. and do nothing with one with one point of mana. Ah, that sounds good to me. Usually that Clockwork Gnome would come out, but you don't need him right now anyway. It's too expensive. He took, you know what, that Clockwork Gnome is MVP. He took two Freezing Traps on his own. And you can't fault him for staying in your hand this turn. Give him a break. He went through hell. Uh, Life Coach is gonna opt for the possible <laughs> extra pin yeah. here. I, I really like that. And plays a Mech Warper because enough minions were taken out. And it's a no opportunity costing because that one mana would have been lost anyway. I don't see how can Trump win this game. He can't. There's no way. There's Lethal on board with a Fireball and there's no way for Trump to stop that 5-4. So that's two losses in a row for mid-range hunter versus life coach's lineup, and that leaves the life coach with nothing but a warlock deck. How much can Trump exploit that? I don't know. Hmm. Well. Well, what? Well, I'm well, not sure what Trump is gonna do here. Well, I mean, he's man. got Druid, Hunter, and <laughs> <laughs> well, Jade. So, so Trump has Druid, Hunter, and Mage versus a warlock. Um, so either Trump is being a very, very crafty tournament player and he said, you know what, I don't mind going 0-2 because my entire lineup is made to beat Handlock. But I don't see that being the case based on what I saw. Man, Trump is sticking to his hunter. Again, yeah. I can't fault I don't him. Think... Mage and Druid, ah. it's... I don't like it, personally. You don't like the hunter or the fact that he took hunter? The major hunter. I, I just don't like it in the current meta game, you know. It is that I hear those words. It's such a staple deck, but yeah, you're right. There is a there is I a reason. I don't think it's, it's like a losing guarantee favor. guarantee to win against a warlock. No, not at all. But... Yeah, so it it just feels really bad. But if Trump sticks to the hunter as his last resort, because that's the, what it is. At the, in the first game when you're 2-0, I mean 0-2, then he thinks that the Hunter has the biggest uh, Chance. chances to win, right? What he wants to get here is, um, at most, get the tiebreaker. If he doesn't think his lineup can beat Warlock, he's going to do his best to always queue up with the next best deck. Start with Hunter, perhaps go. Um, I don't know what his mage is, but I'm going to have to assume. Did we see? We didn't see his mage nor his druid, but probably go for druid afterwards and try out um, the mage depending on what exactly is in his deck so I wouldn't mm. be surprised if Trump just went and shot for the highest possible tiebreaker if if life coach wins this this is another crazy win streak for him man 12-0 then not... this league I don't know man it's um, 
unbelievable, to say the least. Yeah, there's no way. I'd have to... I don't know, I, I keep thinking, like, mid-range Hunter versus Warlock. There are a few ways in which Warlock can stabilize. Some of them involve taking too much damage, like Hellfires and whatnot. You don't really like those. But there are so many situations where you can contest the board effectively. Um, ooh. Yeah, that's the same deck. Everyone is using that. Yeah, everyone is using... <laughs> you know what? If you had told me Dread Infernal would make its way in the metagame, I would have told you it's a good arena card. <laughs> but I don't plan to see it in Constructed very often. And you know what? I would have been wrong because everyone is running Dread Infernal right now. And their mothers. And their mother. Everybody's running Dread Infernal, literally. Especially if Ardi Ud played that card. And his mother. And his mother, yeah. Hi, Mom. Nice Dread Infernal you got there. <laughs> I got a play set of those. <laughs> full full two. <laughs> Arson, that doesn't even yeah. sound right, right? Yeah, that sounds, uh, that sounds odd. Oh, man. The mulligan goes off. Kind of zone out during the mulligan. Oh, that's a pretty weak hand for life coach. Not a very fast one at the very least. And Trump finds his mad scientist, finds the shredder, finds the curve. Trump finds the curve. This is as good as it's going to get. He's got a sticky minute with a shredder. He's got a trap from the mad scientist. Um, well, uh, it feels awkward for 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 the life coach, that's for sure. Yeah, I think uh, Shadow Flame on the Nature Watcher would have been pretty good to keep, but he's probably looking for those dark bombs and those mortal coils. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, man. Oh, wow. Well, there's a few draws to go, so that's a pretty nice pickup, except Freezing Trap is a problem, so mm -hmm. he'll need to find himself an RNB Cow, because this is looking like Trump's choice to keep the Hunter. He got might a really good off. curve. Mortal Coil, not usable at all. At all. So do you life tap, or do you drop the Ancient Watcher? I think you watch, if only for the chance of getting a good defend of Argus. I'm gonna be a little boring here, but you're gonna need that. Yeah, and Adrian agrees. Well, hmm. Life Coach played this very fast. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, Trump is getting the curve of his life. You know what? Well, That's a heavy, heavy start for the Hunter. Heavy Look at this board. And the kill command is really crucial. Like, for yeah. Trump, that's the information, okay, I have to go face. He didn't attack. That's curious. Oh, well, that's nice. That is actually really nice so you, right now. you just drop the voice caller, and that's you it. You don't even think twice. Yeah, you hope yeah. he doesn't have Hunter's Mark for Draxxus if that comes out. And although, you know, there's a possibility that Trump is going to be crafty and just sacrifice the mad scientist to mm -hmm. put down a freezing mm -hmm. trap. He might do it. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. You can even kill a Watcher with your bow and the Mad Scientist by doing so. Oops. <laughs> I didn't want to touch that. So, uh, I Malgani... do like trading here, but he's not going to he's trade. Not trading, okay. That's really interesting because now the Void Color will basically give Life Coach a tremendous taunt. I don't know if that's even the right word to use for, you know, to Those describe guys, a yeah, creature this is... like this one, but this will be a 416 taunt or 108 taunt, which makes your hero invulnerable. And it's really important that he found that sludge belcher, because even though he gets one wave of taunts, he's going to need a bit more than that to stay in the game here. Yeah. What do you he's mean? Gonna you need the... Yeah, you sacrifice the Void Color and go yeah. for the taunt. Mal and Ganis. he finds Malganus. That is better than Jaraxxus because he might need the help. Sure, yeah. Jaraxxus is a 915, but they're both at 315, but they're both weak to Hunter's Mark. What about Belcher now? Just Belcher. No, so you don't want to Hunter? do this because, um, I don't think well, so. you're not playing around Hunter's Mark, but um, you need a creature to trigger the Freezing Trap next turn. And uh, this is the best one, Defend of Argus. It's yeah. not going to get better. I don't yeah. So I think you dropped the Defend of Argus here. He might be considering the Belcher though, you can tell. And you know what? It's not even a bad play because even if Hunter's Mark hits, what is he going to kill Mal Ganis with? So now Trump has to find a way to deal with this board and it's a bit tricky. 
Oh man, he had good curves, but not looking so good now. Did I just say Trump had good curves? Yeah. <laughs> just, just take that, take that out of my. Uh, <laughs> this goes to you know what? <laughs> <laughs> oh god, Noxious, just what did you say? I like uh, Trump's curves. Nope. All right, so. Well, this is getting uh, even more like this is looking like even more of a powerhouse uh, moment. But the problem is, you really don't want to be trading that Malganus away. You almost don't want to taunt it up. Yeah. I you almost wish you were, you know, two health lower. Let's <laughs> play the molten. It's crazy. Wow, Malganus is. <sighs> oh, they have to taunt up Ancient Water, I think. I, would I, mean, really, we'll I, I think the, the defend of Argus, the turn before that was really better. It, then like, Belcher. Yeah. yeah, then Belcher. You could have just... Um, Belcher now. ...towned up the Ancient Watcher without Melganis. But so, you know what? I still I still don't mind the defend of Argus taunt now and you hit for 10 and you have a 5-6 with taunt and then you have a 10-8 with taunt. So unless the opponent finds something... You just um, put two walls between you and the hunter. Exactly. I don't think you trade. That's not going to be an option. The only thing that would be a problem the, um... is if he silences and hunter's marks. Hmm. Because okay, he's he's playing for the win here. I think. Did he just not so? attack? I think. Oh yeah, there's a freezing trap. Never mind me. I think play for the win was the giant. Well. His health's gonna go down eventually. He knows that his opponent is gonna be killing Malganus at some point. If there were a yeah, Hunter's Mark, he has, it would have played. He has to sacrifice the creatures now. Do you sacrifice both or you use Kill Command? I think that that was my reasoning also in the one of the Hunter's games we saw today. You have to keep that Kill Command for the crucial Please. reach. Yep, you want to get that reach at the very end of the game. The Warlock. Oh! oh, a complete whiff for Trump. That's bad. Yeah, that is really bad. And he's still going to be taking that 9 damage from the bow. Wow. Actually, wait. That's pretty dangerous, though, for Life Coach. Yeah, it is. He needs to find something. I don't know what, but something. Well, he got... two he's... really big taunters. So yeah, that... he's got his 4-7 and his 9-9. Nine nine. What he needs to draw is uh, anti-killbot. Next turn, definitely. Because I think you slam Molten Giant down next to that Drake, then you Defender, and then you perhaps even consider killing Lothab in case you're afraid of silences and whatnot, but um, this is so really you, tricky. So you go with uh, Defender of Argus on Drake and on Ancient Water, and just no, play Mol Molten Giant please. just like so? I don't I, think I, it's I bad. Think... Because yeah. um, then you can kill the Lothab. Without losing anything. Oh wait, you have two mortal coils. Never mind. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. You can even cycle. That's the the important part. Is I think the cycle here. It's pretty solid. Well, we'll see what life coach does after 90 seconds of deliberation. Is he gonna have enough time after the rope hits? And the opts for the. Molten for sure, we know that much. It's the rest I'm not too sure about. Is he gonna just go for the power taunts? And he does, so he just passes the turn and waits. Freezing Trap is way too dangerous. Mm -hmm. Freezing Trap is problematic in that Houndmaster as well, if you think about it. It's got... It's a very tricky situation. He needs to get that Draxus out as soon as possible. And then he needs to draw the anti kill boot. Yeah. Or maybe just draw the anti-keyboard next turn and play the Jaraxxus anyway on turn 9. Yeah. That would probably be the best. Now Trump knows that his opponent can't go on the offensive as long as that trap is up. So that's one positive thing for him. Well, he go on, He will go offensively with the defensive Argus. Mm -hmm. Well, what about Houndmaster, Kill com no, you have to kill, keep the kill command. So you Houndmaster the Savannah, kill the Drake, and uh, what else? You don't have anything else. 
So he's just we gonna kill that Drake use... very easily. You we... could use a kill command with Lothem on that giant. Yeah, honestly. and I think and I would... we have him do it. Yeah. But he's not gonna do it. He's just gonna put his opponent on a one turn clock. Actually, this is a one turn clock. He's dead next. Oh yeah, turn. right. Never Good mind. game. That's it. Unless he top decks that anti kill bot off the life tap, and even then, is that even enough? Is that even enough? I don't. Mm, I don't think so. I wonder. <laughs> so first, you double mortal coil. Double coil into heal bot. Well, you do your best. Know. You try for that. There's definitely no Hellfire coming down right now. I don't think Life Coach will make that play. I mean, it makes absolutely no sense. There are four cards lying around in Trump's hand. You know there's no Hunter's Mark, no Iron B. Cal. You would have seen those. So you have to assume they're either, you know, average minions or there is a kill command in there. And you have to mm -hmm. assume Trump has been keeping one. Yeah. So you have to use the multiple cards. Oh, man. This is the coil to rule them all. Oh man, the rope is going fast. He's gonna have to find that anti kill bot very quickly. And there's animation from. What the... about a shadow flame? Shadow flame would work too, and he has to hellfire the board. Oh my goodness, this must feel terrible for him. And this is gonna be game for the, uh, for Trump taking it very close. Six health left. But yeah. ultimately, Trump, having played very well in this match, mm -hmm. I think I agree. he's going to be uh, getting the game off Life Coach. So that's putting Life Coach at 2-1. to one. So he has to play his Warlock again. And if, Trump's, if Trump actually built a lineup to counter Life Coach, then there is definitely something there. Like, like, it's a really good conquest strategy, so I wouldn't even fault Trump for doing so. He's got Druid and Mage left. Druid so, and Mage left. Yeah, that, that puts Life Coach on a bit of a... Awkward position, bit on a, in an awkward position. It definitely does. I mean, you want to play. It's not the worst to, to face those two, but depending on how they're built, they could be really problematic. I mean, what if Trump brought fatigue druid against handlock? That's an auto win. You never lose it. You play two BGHs, two naturalizes. Mm -hmm. If you know life coach is bringing the handlock, that's almost a guaranteed win. I think it is. A, it is a guaranteed win essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, you're right. Well, we'll have to see because um, Trump will now bring the mage. And this, did you see Trump play Fatigue Mage at all? I don't think I have. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't put it past him to play a deck that is slow like this and very methodical. It is a deck that you have to play and have a really deep understanding of it. And as well, you have to think multiple turns ahead and play your outs. And that's something I know Trump likes to do quite a bit. Mm hmm so I wouldn't be, I wouldn't put it past him to bring those those decks here. Maybe that's why he went uh, hunter 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 into fatigue druid fatigue mage. Oh man, this will that take. That would be a crazy. This ending. will take forever. Yeah, probably, <laughs> probably literally forever. Gonna be here for days. We'll have to well, see. We'll be... Nope. We already know, you don't know, I mean the viewers don't know still, but they will know in a second that it is a mech mage. And it is a zombie chow in life coach's hand. That is a pretty important card in this matchup, mm -hmm. to say the least. Oh. <laughs> well. There was a reddit thread about zombie chow actually recently that was asking why is zombie chow so good? And really, it's not so much because like a lot of people who might not know much about the game think that Zombie Chow is a mediocre card because you know it restores five health to your opponent, but a lot of people who've watched tournaments, played Hearthstone enough, understand that the card is really just for board control. That's one of those things. Early game is the most important part. Trump is, I think, in Trump's position, I would maybe keep the five ball. You know. In my starting hand, I mean, it would be nice if he had four cards. It's almost better to be uh, on the coin here, just for the extra card draw. Mm -hmm. But mm, Fireball is a similar card to Kill Command in this matchup. Basically the same. And uh, I would keep Kill Command against Handlock, you know? Because if I got two Kill Commands, then I win. Life Coach is going to have to decide whether or not he wants to keep the card for the Drake, and he decides he wants the board control. There's still no indication of whether this is Mech Mage or some other type of Mage, but... 
He's gonna opt for the zombie child play. I mean, even if it's freeze mage, you still want to get the damage in ASAP, so... Mm -hmm. Sound few predicts. Okay, that's a nice um, target for the mirror entity. Even you better can... than zombie. What's I up? think you should just left up and go face, right? I... Oh, that's even better for me. Oh yeah, that's better. Actually. Never mind that. But without the answer to water, you would just go face, right? Without yeah, attacking the probably. Incentive. Most definitely. So now you can play Ancient Water into Sun Fury. Do you want to? Do you don't you want to just curve out with the biggest Drake possible on four? Or do you need to get that four or five up? Well, then you practically deny the three four attack, right? Yeah, by taunting up, you're right. You deny anything that the three four could have done. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's a yeah a good play there. Oh, it's gonna be big enough for Drake. I mean, I guess there's a point uh, against a somewhat ag aggressive deck where it doesn't really matter whether the minion you're feeding them. I mean, the the, the Twi Drake you're putting down is a four nine or four seven or four six. It's just that's as true. Good. Yeah, that's you basically point. trade two for one with mm -hmm. every single card anyway. Pretty much. And I think oh. that's the reasoning. Oh. Oh wow! So you just slam. Void color, right? You shadow flame next turn. I yeah. think you have to play void color with that top deck. I mean, it's so hard to justify not doing so. Then you have a nine-seven potential with nine attack. I mean, that's crazy. Then Trump has to use fireball on a free card, which is basically like stealing mana from your opponent. I mean, from Trump. Yeah, that's no value for Trump, Trump at all. And he can't, yeah. And if the Void Caller dies now, he can't even do it next turn. Because he can't mm -hmm. ping it. He's going to have to even trade a minion on top. Yeah, exactly. It's even worse. And could he even do it with the Ancient Watcher in the way? Mm. He's going to have to play like a Spider Tank or Pallet of Shredder next turn. And that means... Well, if he uses... He can't use Fireball on the Ancient Watcher. That's for sure. Oh man, Void Caller comes down. That's gonna put Trump on a really, really weird position because you don't want to kill the Void Caller, but you can't let it live. And the ancient washer that was given by Entity is gonna be enough to oh, trigger wait. the Void Caller. Oh the Mad Scientist. That's interesting. I was thinking that if he wants to use the Shadow Flame next turn, he wouldn't have killed the Mad Scientist at all. Interesting approach. So you, you Shadow Flame and then trade your Void Call into the Watcher? Or do you just go mm -hmm. face for three? You could just I'm coil it. Sure. Yeah, you, you can coil it. And live yeah. up. And just... Actually, you could attack a Spider Tank with your Void Caller, Shadow Flame the, spy, the Void Caller, and then coil the remaining one Spider Tank. Yeah, and that's, then you have that's a Malganus, and he can't kill... He Like, he has to Fireball Ping Malganus, you get the initiative back on turn 6 with a tap Drake. This is crazy. But the, remember, there's still a Mirror Entity. Yeah, you're not gonna give the Malganus, though. That's the one upside. Yeah, that's true. So do you well, want to call your Void Clover first? No, you just, you know, you... you oh, he's not gonna go for the Shadow Flame on the 3-1. Okay, that's also not mind. bad. That reminds me. <gasps> the Dread Inferno will trigger the Void Color. Dun, dun, yeah. Dun. It's not half bad, but I would have liked to see Malganus drop down right now, though. Honestly, I would have loved to see attack the Spider Tank, then Shadow Flame your Void Color, then coil the remaining Spider Tank. Hmm, so right. now it's... he gives um, Trump the ability to fight back, which I don't really like. And a huge minion here for, for Trump. Those minions are hard to remove. Even when you've got a good Shadow Flame, you still have to deal with the leftovers. Mm -hmm. So now Trump will most likely attack the... Oh, he uses the Fireball. So he basically life got baited it out, right? And he baited <laughs> it out perfectly because right now Trump is about to get... Wrecked? Well, I mean, it depends. I, I think you have to play the Dread Inferno, but you can't do that. Well, actually, so, yeah, you'd get an 8-8 eight, eight and a 9-7. You just drop that. Never mind. You attack face and you drop Dread Inferno. Do you? Mm -hmm. Um, You think so? 
You no, you probably don't. There's, I mean, I'm nah. trying to figure out how you go about this, but really, I can't see the point of that play. Mm. Maybe you RNG and you attack into the spider tank, and then if Malganus comes out, you just drop your Infernal, and then that's funny. Um, You could just trade into the Drake, and whatever comes well, out, you're just happy with. I'm still wondering why didn't he go for the 100% Malganus? That Shadow Flame on the two spider tanks was good, yeah. I think. I really, I did like it, but... And now he would have gotten the Owl for the Mirror Entity. Yeah. He can still do it if he wants. But, I mean, you could Owl the 3-4, Shadow Flame the Owl, and then trade your Void Caller into a Spider Tank and get a Demon. That's not bad. And you wipe the board completely. That's also not terrible. You're not getting amazing Shadow Flame value, but it's not horrible. Oh, oh. 6 one comes out. That's Too pretty bad. sweet. You don't feed them... Uh, don't feed them any value. Now that Shadow Flame is looking tastier and tastier by the second. Well, yeah, that's true. More stuff comes out, but this is hard to Shadow Flame. So RNB Cal Shadow Flame, boys. And six points to the uh, six points of damage to the face. Yeah, not negligible. Not negligible. Trump was probably hoping for that six four to be. Uh, very useful. In his worst nightmares, that 6-4 gets Iron Beaked and traded by the 6-6. But there were so many good turns for Shadow Flame that Trump is probably not expecting the Iron Beak Yellow Shadow Flame here, but... Probably not. The problem with that play is that it gives the initiative back to the mage. Yeah, that, that, that was the problem with the turn when the mirror entity triggered, you know? That's why I didn't like it. It, it was basically... Life Code was, was in control of the whole game, and he gave that back to Trump with Mirror mm -hmm. Entity. Exactly, you, you gave him back the initiative. What I think I like here is Dr. Boom and trade with a spider tank potentially. I feel like that's also a pretty justifiable play if you want to get back that board. You need to get back that board eventually. Molten Giant is pretty interesting at the very <laughs> least. No, life coach is looking desperate and he goes for the doctor seven play seven mana. Let's do this. At least double piloted shredder this turn. Seems Honestly, like a great yeah. play. Trump could play that. He little does he know there is a shadow flame. But still, it's it's a good play against um anything. Against yeah. board clears too, you know. Well what yes if no. he gets a Yes and no. Freezing coolant. Does it change anything? Not really. Not in this position, no. It doesn't do anything. And this is a useless part. A taunt part would be also cool. Like the trumpet for the ancient water to make it usable at all. The trumpet. I see what you did there. <laughs> well, that was... Um... Well, let's say I was thinking about that. So. Of course you were. Of course you were. And Trump lets Dr. Boom live. That's a good Shadow Flame. That is legitimately... I mean, it, he's got to be taking the Shadow Flame one day. Or do you... I, oh, wow, Hellfire I, with I double Molten. This is so insane. Hellfire... Wait. Um... Oh my god. You, atta you silence off the piloted Sky Golem? You attack it with Boombot, or you just Hellfire everything and then double Molten. I mean, I don't even... Oh, goodness. So you Shadow Flame anyway? Yeah. yeah. Do you only play one Giant as a result? But that's fine. That's good enough, honestly. You got Malganus coming up. Although I really do like Hellfire. I want to be uh, a little annoying with it. You trade but, it to the 4-4 four, four, and the 5-4, then you Hellfire, get double Molten. <sighs> that's not bad. But I think you want to have those bombs on board, you know? Yeah, maintain that advantage. Mm -hmm. And the 7-1 Dr. Boom is Dead. not relevant at all. Yeah, just so Shadow, got, Shadow Flame. Yeah, Shadow Flame and Giant. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah never mind. Never mind the double Molten. It's a, it's, it's a Warlock fantasy. I just love getting those double Moltens in one turn, and then my opponent just gets slammed. But this is definitely going to be a much better and more consistent play. Whoa, particle effects. <laughs> Tap last. He didn't play 
Oh no, he was roped. He roped no, he's, he, no, he's gonna go. No, he's gonna tap next turn. Oh wait, what is he gonna do? What happened? I think he roped himself. <laughs> no, no way. Yeah, After I, all this time? I think... Yeah. I think he roped himself. I refuse to believe that. You don't understand that. Hello. Yeah, they... Based on his mannerisms. Yeah. yeah. That's what happened. Uh, well, that's a good... Card. When you have no... Actually, maybe he just kept it because he wanted to mo mountain, molten, molten. What, wait? <laughs> mountain, molten, molten? Uh, well, it seems like a great play. On paper, I don't know about that. You got 24 points of damage next turn, so you got lethal with uh, Hellfire. Yeah, that's the thing. You've got to be careful about it. Can you... Like, Jaraxxus is also not bad. You ping that Boombot, uh, the Boombot into the shield, and then you kill the Anoyo. Nah, why would you then play you, you can't play... You can't play the yeah. Giants, then. Uh, I think... Well, we know what's happening in Trump's uh, hand. So the three Giants... The the Triangle of Giants is the best option here, but we know that there's no Fireball in hand. I kind of like Malganis, even. Just alone, Malganis. What about Hellfire? Oh, it's happening. The Hellfire play is coming. Yeah, Hellfire double Giants. Yeah. Kind of like what I wanted to do last round. Oh, maybe not. Maybe just the... double Giants now. Yeah, never mind the Hellfire with a 4 3 going. Void Core and Giant? Yeah, that's also good. But um, I would rather see the double double Giants instead of the Void Core because it puts more. Oh, wow, that's a fireball. Uh, it puts more pressure and also you don't, you don't make the. Um, you know, the 50 50 with the demon. Demons, yeah. Well, you can play Jarax next turn and just go with Void Color Sacrifice because that will be a part of Shredder. And this is, I think, that will be the play, you know? Now, going face is going to allow uh, Life Coach to play the second Molten and Jaraxxus or so, Malganis. No, no, no. You, I think you go Molten Giant, Jaraxxus. And oh, trade your Void Caller for Malganus. Oh no, you can do this like this, it's no problem. I think there was a there was a 8 damage wasted there on that Anoya Tron. Yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. Okay, I'm not insane. Doomsayer, it, boys! But it's oh. lethal anyway. Yeah, I think he wanted to kill the 3-2 with it. Oh yeah, that, yeah, yeah that's way better. better. Yeah, life could play it perfectly. Well, how do you <laughs> deal with <laughs> Trump is looking at this, he's like, wait, what just happened to me? I thought That's I had value. this game. <laughs> that was value. You got trumped. <laughs> Oblivion, and your access Oblivion. is going to take the game. That's three to one for Life Coach in this series. Trump got a win with that Hunter, but ultimately not enough. And Life Coach is going to steal a series. Um, very well done by him. Goes 4-0 in his group. Almost a 12-0, but it was just an 11-1, you know, triple yeah, one. Really, really close. <laughs> yeah, that was. I, I put one game. Yeah. In four weeks. And it was a really good game too. I mean, all these yeah. games that we just saw, you know, between Life Coach and Trump, um, those games I like because they take a lot of time. They take a lot of thinking, and you can tell that the players take not only take their time, but you can tell by the lines of play that they take that they have a plan in mind that goes further than the next turn. It's it's much broader than that, and that's one of the things I, I love about Hearthstone, especially at the competitive level. True. True. And All right. It was a great play. So, uh, what the Before turn? we move on to the next break, I'd like to just remind you guys, because we've told you before, but I'd like to remind you, we're looking for casters. So if you think you've got what it takes to cast, um, just send a... Um, a video of you casting a VOD, VOD, uh, to what's the email address for Kingwin? Just want to make sure we don't get it wrong. Esports uh, at kingwin.net. All right, so send it over there. A video of yourself casting because if we're going to be needing some casters soon, Lothar might be doing some traveling. So, uh, in a nutshell, we're going to have to find a replacement. And there are, you know, bigger opportunities lying around. So, <laughs> if oh, you want to cast, if you want to cast, just give it a shot. So, that being said, we're going to be going for a short break, 10 minutes. We'll be right back. Who's playing after this? Uh, let me check.
Um, okay. It's uh, Kibler versus Sho. All right, so we're going to get a pretty good match between two players who have had a pretty... I mean, Sho has a pretty good run. Got demolished by uh, Firebat recently, but yeah. hopefully he's not been demoralized. Might made, uh, Might make his lineup a little more consistent as a result. So don't go anywhere.